Not all inventions go on to become successful products. Sometimes an idea doesn't catch on, no matter how smart or well-suited to its purpose it might be. On other occasions, a device or facility is invented for a single specific purpose and then abandoned when the purpose has been served. Eventually, the inventions go on to become strange, half-forgotten pieces of technology, like something from a science fiction movie. To show you what we mean, here are some great examples. If you have an interest in science, you probably know what an American lunar lander unit looks like. We saw them in the 1960s and 1970s, and we'll see them again soon. You're far less likely to have seen the Lunit Korabil spacecraft, also known as LK-3. There's a good reason for that. It's the Soviet version of the lunar lander, and it never made it to the moon. The spacecraft was built during the 1960s as part of a project to send a Soviet crew to the moon. Three modules were flown in Earth orbit without a crew, but none ever went further than that. It was a victim of the failure of the N-1 launch vehicle project, and further development was ultimately cancelled when the Americans beat the Russians to the lunar landing punch. As you can see from these pictures, the Soviet lunar lander would have been far smaller than its American equivalent, with enough space for just one person to make it to the surface of Earth's satellite. Five units still exist today. Four of them are, as you might expect, in Russia. The fifth, bizarrely, is on display at Disneyland Paris. These days, Urbine is just a strange abandoned town in Latvia. You'll find it in Ventspils County. Back in the days of the Soviet Union, the residents of this town were military officers and their families, who were billeted to the town to protect and work on a top-secret Soviet radar facility known only as STAR, at the core of which was the RT-32 Urbine Radio Telescope. As is the case with many former Soviet facilities of this kind, it was abandoned shortly after the collapse of the USSR in 1991. Troops and officers stayed on here for a while, but packed their bags and left for good in 1993. The enormous radio telescope is still in use today and belongs to the Ventspils International Radio Astronomy Center, but there's nobody living in the former houses dotted around it. The village has an eerie tone and would make for an ideal location if somebody wanted to film a post-apocalyptic horror movie. In some cases, Clothing and possessions belonging to the former soldiers are still visible through the windows of the houses, almost a full 30 years after they moved out. Visit Istra in Russia and you'll find the towering hulk of machinery that was once the Marx generator. There's no power flowing through the generator today, but once upon a time, this was a lightning machine so powerful that it equaled every other generating machine in the whole country put together. The generator was built by the Russian Electrical Engineering Institute during the 1970s to test lightning insulation. When it was operating at the peak of its capacity, it could discharge for a fraction of a second, barely over 100 microseconds, and create artificial lightning. Its purpose was to test lightning insulation for military aircraft. Former Russian President Boris Yeltsin used to serve as the facility supervisor. The site, which was also known as the Istra High Voltage Research Center, was largely abandoned after the fall of the Soviet Union, but has been switched on sporadically since then, when its unique abilities have been required. The most recent instance was in 2014, when it was used to test the lightning strike resistance of the Sukhoi Superjet 100. Pan America's first ever Boeing 747 jumbo jet has had a long and distinguished career. It's been more than just a transatlantic carrier. When its flying days were over, it had a second career as a restaurant. Now that too has come to an end, and the old plane seems to have been forgotten and left to rust and rot in Namyangyu, South Korea. As this was the first commercial 747 ever built by Boeing, it really ought to be in a museum alongside other historic aircraft, but that doesn't seem to be a likely outcome to its current predicament. The plane, named Wan T. Trip after the man who founded Pan Am, was shipped to South Korea from Southern California in the year 2000 to private investors, 
who ripped out its innards and invited wealthy citizens in to dine in strange surroundings. The business has long since failed. The owners had failed to take into account that it would need a barrel of oil every day to keep the heating working, and that ruined their profit model. They shut down in 2005, and it's been alone ever since. Many ships would love to be referred to as America's most luxurious cruise liner, and so it would be wrong to single just one of them out. But the SS America would have to be considered among the top contenders. When she was in her prime, she was one of the best-looking ships on the water. She wasn't always as good-looking as she was in her cruise liner days. Initially, she'd been a troop transport vehicle during the Second World War, shipping soldiers from place to place under the name of USS West Point. Only after the war did she receive the investments and upgrades that made her such a remarkable luxury vessel. She welcomed first-class passengers for almost four decades, but by the 1980s, she'd begun to look dated, so she was destined for a shipbreaker's yard until a twist of fate arrived. The SS America was instead bought by an investment company in Thailand and was to be moved to Phuket for another refurbishment. She never made it. A storm ran her aground close to Fuerteventura, where she was broken clean in half by the tide. It was immediately obvious that she couldn't be salvaged, and so she was left to slowly sink over the course of the following two decades. We're back to the topic of the space race again now. Although suggesting that this next piece of abandoned tech would ever be capable of racing anywhere is wishful thinking. It's the enormous former Soviet Union space shuttle transporter, which is now derelict in Kazakhstan. The massive moving platform was once responsible for moving the Russian space shuttle orbiter Buran, along with its solid rocket boosters, to the launch pad from its hangar. As far as we're aware, it was used only once when Buran completed its single crewless flight in 1988. The shuttle was tragically destroyed in an accident in 2002, but the shuttle transporter escaped unharmed. Even though it's probably still viable as a piece of machinery, it's been exposed to the elements for several years now and wouldn't have a purpose even if it could be repaired. The job it was designed to do no longer needs doing, and even if Russia were to build more rockets today, there probably wouldn't be much need for them to be mounted on platforms like this. Considering the fact that the United Kingdom is such a comparatively small group of islands, some truly astonishing things have washed up on the shore there. The people of the Outer Hebrides Islands off the coast of Scotland still remember the day an entire oil rig came to pay them a visit. The rig, known as Transocean Winner, was being dragged into position by a tugboat when it broke free of its moorings and scraped its way onto the land of Dalmore Beach on the Isle of Lewis. Fortunately, nobody was on board the rig when it crashed, although it was carrying 280 tons of fuel and so posed a significant fire and pollution risk. A major rescue operation had to be staged in order to free the marooned oil rig, but it was damaged beyond repair. All that could be done with it was to take it to Turkey so it could be scrapped. The company that owned it was later fined half a million dollars for attempting to tow it during a storm. With the benefit of hindsight, anyone who knows anything about sailing ought to have known that was a stupid idea. High Holborn is a busy street in London, England. Thousands of people walk up and down that street every single day without ever realizing they're striding straight over one of the city's most well-hidden Cold War marvels. We're talking about the Kingsway Telephone Exchange. The formerly top-secret facility was built underneath Chancery Lane Tube Station in the 1940s. Initially, it was going to be little more than yet another air raid bunker. But halfway through the construction phase, the government changed its mind. It was repurposed as a communications center for the rest of the war, and then continued to serve the government after the war ended, first as an archive for public records, and then as the UK termination point for TOT-1, which was the first ever transatlantic telephone cable. K-1 
Kingsway Telephone Exchange eventually reopened to the public in the 1960s as Kingsway Trunk Switching Center and Post Office, with a complement of around 200 staff. It still had one important secret duty to perform, though. The telephone exchange served as the infamous Cold War hotline that connected the President of the United States and the President of the USSR throughout the Cold War. Many of you can probably name the tallest building in the world. It's the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, which stands 2,722 feet tall. Until the skyscraper was built, though, the tallest building in the world was the Warsaw Radio Mast. It would still be the second tallest building in the world right now if it hadn't fallen down due to a myriad of design flaws. The radio mast was erected on the outskirts of Konstantyniau in Poland in 1974, measured at a height of 2,120 feet. It remained in use as the main transmitter for Warsaw Radio Television until 1991, emitting a signal so strong it could be picked up on the east coast of North America. However, the threat posed by wind damage hadn't been taken into account properly when the mast was designed, and the steel lattice was badly damaged by the mid-1980s. When repair work was attempted in 1991, cables snapped away from the mast without warning, and the tower dramatically folded in on itself, bending almost perfectly in two and then falling to the ground. Nobody was injured, but the owners of the repair company took the blame for the incident and were sentenced to jail. When we hear the word bunker, we immediately get an image in our minds. Most bunkers look broadly similar, but that isn't true of every bunker. The Winkle Towers of Zossen in Germany might just be the strangest looking bunkers in the world. These tall, cone-shaped structures look much more like space rockets or missiles than military hideouts, although locals are more likely to refer to them as the concrete cigars. There were once around 200 structures like this in Germany, all of which were built during the Second World War and designed to function as air raid shelters. Those in Zossen were especially well equipped because they were so close to the Nazi Supreme Command Center in Berlin. The idea behind their design, which came from an architect called Leo Winkel, is that their narrow shape would make it hard to target the bunkers from the air, and that even if a bomb did hit them, it would slide down the side of the structures rather than detonate on impact. The theory mostly turned out to be true, as only one Winkel Tower is recorded as having been destroyed by an Allied bomb blast during the war. To the untrained eye, the shell of the Hout 4 now 4 site in Belgium is a work of incomprehensible mechanical wonder. Known simply as HF4 to the locals, this used to be the heart of the Cockerel Somber Steelwork plant and was once one of the largest in the country. HF4 had a long and proud history, providing employment and producing steel since the early 19th century. Right at the core is this gigantic blast furnace, which generated phenomenal heat to smelt iron ore. By the time the 21st century rolled around, the majority of the steel created here was used by the car manufacturing industry. But that industry almost collapsed in Belgium during the global financial crisis of 2008. With no cars to build, demand for steel ground to a standstill, and the blast furnace found itself with nothing to do. It sat quietly for four years before being sold to another production company, but the new company ultimately decided it was antique and obsolete, resulting in HF4's permanent closure. The longer it stands empty, the less chance there is of yet another firm coming in and finding a productive use for it. It could make for an incredible concert venue. Finishing up back on the theme of Soviet creations, would it be more accurate to call this next piece of abandoned technology a plane or a ship? We'll let you decide. It's an MD-160 Loon Classic Kranoplan, built in the 1970s. It's also known as an Ukta, but a lot of people prefer to call it the Caspian Sea Monster. This monstrous vessel is even bigger than a Boeing 747. Rather than taking off high into the sky, the Ukra was designed to fly on an air cushion around 15 feet above sea level, 
which would have made it extremely difficult for enemy vessels to detect on approach. Nobody knows the precise details of what it got up to while it was still in service, but it was retired during the 1990s and stored at Kaspiski Naval Base. More recently, it's been transported across the Caspian Sea to reach Durbant and Dagestan, where it's scheduled to be turned into a museum. This singular Ekrano plan is understood to be the only model completed before the Soviet Union had to shut down its WIG program because of a lack of funds. While it's difficult to imagine a vessel of this size sneaking up on anybody, its low clearance above the water, coupled with its supersonic missiles, meant that by the time an enemy vessel saw it, it would already be too late. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!